Next up, we've got the founder and president of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, Dr. Ronald Klatz. Dr. Klatz, I don't know if any of you are aware of this, he actually coined the term anti-aging medicine. And since 1981, He's been, uh, he's been integral in pioneering the new therapies and treatments for the prevention of age-related degenerative diseases. He's been instrumental in, continu in the continuing development of A4M's website with over uh, an audience of over 300,000. Dr. Klatz is the founder and key patent developer of Organ Recovery Systems, a biomedical research company that's focusing on technologies for brain resuscitation, trauma, and emergency medicine, as well as organ transplantation and blood preservation. Dr. Klatz has been an inventor, developer, and administrator of over 100 scientific patents and has been named as top 10 medical innovators in the nation. Dr. Klatz is an author and a scholar and an innovator, second to none. And without further ado, I give you Dr. Klatz. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's really my pleasure to be here, and the uh, best part of my, uh, my day is uh, to uh, greet you members of the Academy. Uh, could you do me a favor? How many people are new here to the Academy? Just hold your hands up for a second so I can say. Okay, that's great. Well, let me just tell you something, quite candidly. You've chosen wisely, because anti-aging medicine is, frankly, the, um, the next great medical specialty. Uh, we are the future of medicine. Uh, we're also the past of medicine. Medicine really started out as, uh, you know, improving the quality as well as the quantity of the human lifespan. And somehow uh, conventional medicine or traditional medicine has lost that uh, has lost that, uh, you know, that, 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 that path. Uh, somehow we got uh, distracted into acute care and into trauma care and into uh, uh, forgetting that uh, a very big part of medicine is about extending and enhancing the quality as well as the quantity of life. Uh, and uh, that's what really anti-aging medicine is all about, and that's why we've had such meteoric growth, and that's really been the success of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Uh, Dr. Goldman and myself got started in this, and um, we really, um, you know, uh, began our, our, our quest towards, uh, you know, the, the future of medicine, anti-aging medicine, which is nothing more than a euphemism for advanced preventive medicine. There's nothing fancy about anti-aging medicine. It's just really uh, the application, the clinical application of advanced, uh, advanced breakthroughs and advanced technology uh, in the uh, realm of uh, preventive medicine. And we got started in this in 1981. And uh, it's interesting that the original founders of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine were uh, Olympic physicians, many of them. Um, they were interested in improving, uh, you know, physiology for uh, athletes. And the same technology that you use for enhancing uh, athletic performance and uh, enhancing physiology in younger people is the same technology that we use in anti-aging medicine. And it's because anti-aging medicine works and is demonstrable and provable and is evidence-based that we've had such incredible growth around the world. Uh, and now there are members of the Academy in over 100 countries around the world, and we're providing continuing medical education and educational programs and informational programs for over 500,000 health professionals worldwide. The A4M at this time has trained over 100,000 physicians worldwide. And as I say, the reason why it's so popular is because it works, and it works quite uh, um, demonstrably. And I think the, uh, probably the best indicator of that is uh, this slide, which talks about the anti-aging longevity dividend. And that is a difference of 24.6 years of age uh, between uh, the uh, shortest-lived population in America, which are um, uh, people from uh, uh, Native American Indians, uh, women in uh, uh, South Dakota. This was just in women. This was, uh, you know, not, not in men, but in women specifically. And what they found was that uh, these women who received uh, free health care from the, uh, you know, from public, uh, you know, health services and the Indian health services uh, had a lifespan of 66.5 years of age on average versus the best demographic that we can find that demonstrates the anti-aging lifestyle which is uh, Asian Americans who are residing in Bergen County, New Jersey, 
and they live longer than any other ethnic group. Now, these are not, when I say Asian Americans, these are not simply Chinese or Japanese or Filipino or Malay. They're from all Asian countries, and they're relatively affluent, and they're very well educated, and they're living an anti-aging lifestyle, as, as close as we can uh, prove to an anti-aging lifestyle. And they live 91.1 years of age. So I think the proof is in the pudding. You have HMO health care, free health care for Native American women, 66 years of age, average uh, life expectancy, and you have Asian American women uh, who are living in Bergen County, New Jersey, uh, enjoying the anti-aging, uh, at least the philosophy of anti-aging medicine, the Eastern uh, uh, Chinese, the, the Eastern Asian philosophy of advanced preventive medicine. Uh, and these are wealthy people, and they have access to advanced medical technologies, and they're living 91.1 years of age. I think that's the best evidence. I'm showing this just to remind you that you can spot the pioneers because they're the ones with the arrows in their back. <laughs> And I point this out not to say boo-hoo, oh, poor me, because it's not oh, poor me. This has been uh, the greatest uh, adventure of my life, uh, helping to uh, found this new medical profession, anti-aging medicine. Um, but I was absolutely shocked. You know, when I started this, uh, this, this whole affair back in 1981 with Dr. Goldman, we thought for sure that, you know, who wouldn't be for a healthier, longer, happier lifespan? I mean, you know, it's right up there with uh, mother's milk and apple pie, you know? What could be wrong with, uh, you know, wanting to live longer, healthier, happier, less disease, that sort of thing? And we thought that there would be no, uh, uh, no one who wouldn't want to sign up for that, and there would be no uh, uh, consternation, there'd be no uh, 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 argument. Everybody would just, you know, love us, say, hey, yeah, that's great. Uh, but we, we found out that um, when you try to change society in any way, shape, or form, and you try and change not so much society but the, uh, uh, but the power establishment, if you try and change the economics uh, in any way, shape, or form, you uh, step on some big toes. And uh, I was really amazed uh, at that the, uh, how easily the media uh, became, um, instead of an unbiased and open and free press, became a very closed press. And I wasn't really so surprised uh, with, the, um, with the general media, like the Chicago Tribune or other, uh, uh, you know, political publications. You know, that would say, oh, there's no such thing as anti-aging medicine. There's nothing you can do to reverse aging. There's nothing you can do to affect, uh, you know, uh, length of life. It's all about quality of life. It's not about quantity of life. Don't even think about that. And that's literally the, 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 the message that the media was pumping out because they were essentially paid to pump that out. Uh, but that was then, and that was, uh, we, there was a disinformation campaign that was very, you know, very uh, negative about anti-aging, uh, starting back in uh, uh, 1998 when anti-aging medicine really started becoming very popular. But now, uh, now we have, uh, you know, the truth will out, and now we're talking about marked reduction in signs of aging with resveratrol in cellular metabolism. Back then, the, uh, you know, the, the, the establishment media was saying no existing intervention works for anti-aging. There's no such thing, and it's, you know, it's probably a scam, so don't even listen to those crazy doctors who suggest that you can do anything to increase the quality of your or quantity of your life. Uh, and now, uh, with the Endocrine Society saying that, uh, in fact, elderly men with uh, uh, higher activity of uh, their IGF-1, which is a, a marker of growth hormone activity, have a greater life expectancy. And then back then, they were saying that there's no evidence to support the use of DHEA as an anti-aging hormone. Uh, and that there, it was inconclusive as to the benefits of taking hormone replacement therapy. But today, again, the Endocrine Society shows that, uh, it admits that testosterone replacement therapy improves the risk factors of cardiovascular disease. So what a difference just a few years makes. Even Scientific American, I was really shocked uh, that Scientific American would take the position publicly that there was nothing that existed that, that pointed to the benefit of anti-aging therapeutics or, prevent, or the advanced preventive medicine that anti-aging medicine was all about. And that was in 2002. And how easily corrupted even the scientific publications were. But the British Journal of Medicine uh, says that uh, slowing the aging process is in fact uh, a goal and a, a, a very uh, achievable goal. And uh, the time has come for a new model of health promotion and disease prevention of the 21st century.